Nicola. Three straight MVPs. Is that where we're going? Oh, man. Yeah. Well, it's Taco Ball Tuesday. It is Taco Ball Tuesday. I don't know why we're getting into end of season rewards, even though it's the end of the season. Who's the MVP? <laughs> Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid. We know. He doesn't get his third straight. He does not. Nope. Giannis doesn't get his, what, third? Doc Rivers is actually right on this. He nailed it after that 52-point game. And then he didn't, what, play the rest of the season? It was only like two or three more games. But... The the Sixers seed right now is just a formality. So, Well, a second-round exit under knock-knock. Here comes Doc. But first... We're, we're jumping, jumping ahead of ourselves, Justin. First Come round. on, man. Come on, man. The end of this has been so exciting. We had every team in action over the weekend. Um, yesterday, actually. All culminating in next to zero seed changes occurring. So <laughs> while there was much anticipation and action and excitement, nothing really changed except for uh, some teammates getting upset at one another. Multiple teammates. On <laughs> having <Actions>. fist thrown, <laughs> but I will say what was phenomenal to follow in the last week or so was how diverging scenarios you could have, and it was so funny watching like NBA try to try to update their seeding guide because it was like if the Suns lose these two games and the Warriors win these, they'll jump up to a four seed. And if this happens, like this team will miss the playoffs. So it's just wild. At one point, I think you had all these teams with like 38 losses from pretty much the five seed all the way down to the nine yeah. seed. And it was weird because I was looking at like the possible scenario outcomes and I was like, so if the Lakers win, the worst they could get would be the seven seed. And then there was like an outcome where like if they won, but somebody else lost and somebody else lost and somebody else won. The fact that they had a tiebreaker over mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. OKC and New Orleans and Golden State would be rendered useless because in a four-way tie, they end up going to like conference stuff. And I was like, wait, this doesn't even make sense. Yeah, there are definitely some weird-ass tiebreaker scenarios, which – Largely, we we avoided, but it was fun to to watch things burn for a little bit there. We've got a lot to talk about, Justin. We've got some play-in games that start tomorrow, so we'll be taking a look at the schedule for play-ins because I love the fact that you can root for or against a team to make the playoffs by one game or miss the playoffs by one game and potentially two games. We'll get into that in a second. We're still we're we're still getting adjusted to these plans, and we'll take a sneak peek at some of the playoff matchups that you're most excited for in the first round. Now that we've got everything settled, all right. How does that sound? Sounds delightful. Yes. Well, let's get right into it with our play-in games. So before we get to the bracket, let's just let's just talk through what we've got on the horizon here with games starting tomorrow wednesday not thursday we got friday <laughs> oh yeah you got yeah the play-in's gonna happen we're gonna get to collect our breath i suppose or no yeah because round one is gonna start saturday right yeah, so so my next tab here, we we actually have the first round matchups, which start Saturday and then Sunday. Yes, let's go. All right, so Justin. Yes, sir. Play ins here, and in a second, I'll flip over to the bracket. But um, what what intrigues you here, starting in the Eastern Conference? What are you looking at with these play ins? Um, it's really kind of like, well. Bulls Raptors doesn't intrigue me at all. Uh, I feel like those were two teams trying to lose, and they somehow ended up getting stuck with the ninth and tenth seed, and they're going to have to play a game. One of them's going to have to play two games, and that's their punishment <laughs> for being bad. Uh, 
So the only intrigue I have is Hawks Heat. And this is like recent Eastern Conference like heavyweights, right? It wasn't that long ago that the Heat were in the final of the bubbles. And what, the following year were the Hawks Eastern Conference finalists? They were, yeah. Against what, the Bucks that year? Did mm-hmm. they end up winning? So it's like now they're all of a sudden fighting for seventh, eighth relevancy in the East when you thought, oh, well, the Hawks are only going to get better because Trey Young's going to be coming into his prime and the Heat are going to keep adding pieces. In the acquisition of DeJounte Murray. Yeah, they got Murray. Uh, no idea what's been going on with Kyle yeah. Lowry. Um, they just seem wildly inconsistent. Uh, Jimmy Butler, I feel like he – I don't know of any major injuries, but he's just out every other night. He's slowly entered like the Kawhi zone. So, um, the Kawhi light zone. Yeah. Kawhi light <laughs> zone. And so I would uh, like somewhat expect, I don't know. I'm, I would say the Heat are going to win this matchup. Uh, if they I have should, to. they should win this. I mean, it's, it's a one game series in Miami. Yeah. And these are the seven, eight seeds. I fully expect both of them to advance i would expect the heat to win game one i would expect atlanta to beat whoever the bulls or the raptors trot out there um i'm surprised that the bulls and the raptors weren't sellers towards the trade deadline um the bulls i I think they were holding on hope and then ended up with the ball season ending injury and they Mm -hmm. ended up not going in a direction they were hoping to go but I think we end up with the East staying pat at seven and eight, stay seven and eight. Mm -hmm. And I do think um, the heat to me are a little bit intriguing because they have the championship pedigree. They have Jimmy Butler. We've seen him absolutely take over games and, and dominate down the stretch. I feel like the heat are a poor man's golden state warriors in the Eastern conference where it's like, you're looking, you're looking, and regardless of the seed, you're still a little bit nervous about that matchup. Um, so we'll see if the Heat can make a dent. How about these Western Conference games? So our game two, Minnesota at Lakers, the King, which is finds a way to play himself into the yeah. <laughs> seven so seed. Here's the deal: they somehow they had a chance to get maybe the fifth or sixth seed, the fifth seed, and they ended up um, losing a game, hoping that Golden State would end up losing one of their games, but it ended up that everybody else was resting their players, and so it didn't work out that way. Uh, Perhaps trying to avoid Phoenix in the first round um, and end up with getting that sixth seed, I think is what everybody was looking for to get Sacramento. They ended up sticking down at the seventh seed uh but um i don't have all the numbers in front of me and everything but i believe since the trade deadline or even since all-star break i think the trade deadline they've had the first or second best defense in the league uh their record since the all-star break i think is third or fourth in the nba um so after having what they started like two and ten uh, and were horrible and spent the whole year trying to climb out of a Russell Westbrook sized hole. Um, they're playing some of their best basketball. Um, yes, they're still the seventh seed. I would. So here's the thing. I don't know if Gobert is going to be suspended or not. Uh, they kicked him out of the middle of the last game of the season. Oh, he's 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 a, he's he's suspended. He, he's not playing that. I think he's not up. playing in that. It, they yeah. Losing. They were losing when he got suspended, when he threw that punch and left uh, and they ended up winning that game. So Minnesota perhaps will be better without him on the court because he seems to be a net negative. Um, but that game is very intriguing because that is like two franchises that have basically given up whatever future they think they might have. Um, the Wolves gave up like a decade worth of their future to get Rudy Gobert. They gave up more to get Gobert than the Cavs did to get Donovan Mitchell, which is just crazy to think about. So, 
Um, I, a loss for one of those two teams and perhaps getting eliminated from the play in itself if they can't manage to win against the winner of OKC New Orleans could spell certain doom for their franchise. <laughs> so uh, I'm almost more concerned with who's going to lose out here. You, you like, almost think the loser, the loser of Wolves Lakers just bombs the next game too. And yeah. misses, misses out. I, so I find it really, I have a hard time believing that the Lakers will lose both games. Um, I think it's more likely that the Wolves lose both games than that the Lakers do. Um, so I would highly anticipate the Lakers being in the actual playoffs, getting a seven game series who yeah. that other seed goes to. I don't know. I almost think it's going to be OKC. Yeah. The Pelicans first. Who would, who would have to win two road games back to back. Pelicans for as good as they can be, aren't going to have Zion. Um, I don't know. Is Ingram going to carry them and win back-to-back games? I don't know. I really like what OKC has built. Uh, I like Shy. Um, I can see OKC and the Lakers advancing in the West. Yeah. See, I, 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 I still think we're going to get these two seeds advance. Um, as long as it's a competitive game, if if the Wolves get blown out in LA, you're, you just got to be so def- defeated and deflated going into that next game. And I now realize why there's no games on Thursday to give these teams a rest before going into their elimination game. Before their loser game. So, so it makes, makes more sense now. All right, let's... So, I, I like this visual a lot more because it just helps break down the um, basically these these different play in games. So you know we're talking Lakers, we're talking Minnesota. They play winner of that has the luxury of facing John Morant and the Grizzlies. Loser still got a chance play the winner of Pels and Thunder, and the winner of this matchup plays Nikola. And the Nuggets. So, <clears throat> last question about the play in here, and then we're going to preview some of these round one matchups. Sir, yes, sir. Any of these one seeds or two seeds going to be a little bit nervous about a possible matchup here? Any of these seeds yes. rooting to not get slotted against yes. the said teams? Uh, Denver and Memphis, neither one of them want to play the Lakers for reasons I've said top defense in the league pretty much, uh, since they made all their trades at the trade deadline, uh, really overhauled their roster. Um, Anthony Davis has been playing at a very high level as of late, um, very few stinker games or mediocre games thrown in the mix there. LeBron still getting healthier off that injury uh, and seems to be in like full control of games, Um, putting up crazy numbers. uh, I think he put up in that one game that they did lose was the back to back after he played overtime uh, 40 minutes. And then he like put up uh, 30 points in the second half. I think he went for like 36 and six or something like that. 33, six and six. Um, He's not really slowing down um, as long as they are healthy. Uh, I think nobody, I don't think Denver or Memphis wants to play them. Uh, they're hoping that any way possible, they don't have to see them in round one. Because I think I could see Memphis and Lakers going seven. I could see Denver and Lakers. I could see the Lakers winning in six. I think Denver has really coasted. I think they coasted, and I think they've been playing their worst basketball the last couple weeks of the season. I, 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 
J JMC, I gotta hit the timeout button here <laughs> and say I think you've been smoking too much of this uh, Lakers crack pipe, my man. And, and you're you're a little too anarchy, baby. Let's go. You're 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 enjoying your seat on this hype train a little bit too much because you've got yeah. to you've got to remember the playoff start and it is a brand new season. I don't care what your seating is. And let's let's acknowledge the reality that the Lakers had to have their foot on the pedal just to get here. And I agree, they're playing, they're peaking at the right time. You just told me it's a brand new start and the seeding doesn't matter. And now you're going to tell me how the Lakers are at a disadvantage because I'm I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like (laughs) dial it back a little bit. Okay, these (laughs) Lakers were sprinting towards the finish line just to get into the playoffs. And also, you know, acknowledging the fact that these are going to be one, you know, these are going to be really tough games just to get to your first round matchup. And I mean, both teams are going to be laying it on the line. That's going to take a toll on you. Who knows what kind of injuries we could possibly see in these, these first just play in games. But um, I am not as high on the Lakers hype train. Let me just say that. Like, the well, as good as the Lakers have played in the last few weeks, I still don't have much faith in this squad based off of their body of work for the season. Again, playoffs change everything, so who, who knows what we'll see. But um, I'm, I mean, it, it's LeBron. It's I agree with you that they're out of any team. I would not want to face this team in the first round, but I I would not. I don't think I'd pick the Lakers to win in in going up against the Nuggets or the Memphis uh, or the Grizzlies. All right. I <laughs> just just had to dial it back a little bit. First round playoff schedule. Our games. Oh, I can't wait for this weekend, man. Look at this slot of games. Holy cow. Playoff basketball. Screw the Masters. Now, screw any other sports going whoa, on right now. Hey. I want basketball. I it's want here. NBA playoffs. It's here. Where do we even start? Well, let's head back to the uh, bracket. Let's just go conference at a time. Let's see. Let's let's start in the East. I, I need some more time to compile some of my thoughts on a few Western Conference matchups that have got me puzzled. So, yeah. with good reason. Uh, we could look at the East. Don't know who's coming out of that play in <laughs> East Miami, probably Atlanta. I don't see any round one upsets in the East. I see Milwaukee, Boston, Philly. Cleveland, all winning. Um, I don't know. Miami, Boston, round one. Could push them the f- six games at most, but yeah, you you could yeah I could see I could see the Heat steal an A game. Milwaukee, Atlanta, I could see it just being a sweep. I don't know. I don't see much threat coming there. Um, I don't see Philly being threatened at all by Brooklyn. Uh, Obviously, uh, Cleveland and New York being the closest of the seeds um, and the closest of the records uh, probably has the longest first-round series. Um, But I – and obviously for – obvious reasons <laughs> i am just hyped about the cleveland and, and the new york Knicks series um due to my uh allegiances yes shall we say but also the fact that the new york knicks tried to bluff the utah jazz into getting donovan mitchell at a cheaper price when the Jazz were like, we have a better offer on the table. And they're like, we call. They're like, fine. Donovan Mitchell's going to Cleveland. And the Knicks blew it. 
And the fact that Donovan Mitchell could knock the Knicks out of the playoffs would just be so glorious. Poetic justice. Yes. And I already know our main man, Mr. Stephen A. Smith, who has been crying about it all year long. He's like, if I have to see Donovan Mitchell knock the Knicks out of the playoffs, I'll go berserk. <laughs> He's going to lose his mind. And the comedy gold, the, 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 just, the just pure comedy gold. The tears gonna... of the basketball gods yeah. laughing. Yeah. So uh, that is, uh, for many reasons, obviously going to be so, so sweet. Uh, and that will be the most entertaining for me in the Eastern Conference. Um, Something else that that intrigues me re- real quick here is the Sixers, Sixers Nets. I, another like poet, talk about poetic justice. Remember this time last year, just how much buzz there was still about Ben Simmons. When was the last time you even heard Ben Simmons mention like this man has totally disappeared. And I know the Sixers, like, it, so the Nets, obviously it's going to be a very different, different squad, different, starting roster players there but i still know this sixers squad is just gonna be playing for like ben simmons vengeance here and i, I would playing. i think they shut him down it, that's why you don't I, hear his name he hasn't i don't, I don't even i don't even know where he is i'm gonna google he's him on the court he produces less than draymond green and we all know how that is how his production level is right now so i would love to see a four game sweep and just absolutely snuff out the nets and just laugh yes. laugh them off in four games but can you count on that because our good friend doc our good friend doc rivers has has found a way to lose easier matchups with more with more <laughs> oh. um, i feel like you can't ever rule out the doc rivers he's the great unequalizer <laughs> for his teams um no i think Embiid's playing at such a high level even james harden is obviously not at the high level that we were accustomed to for so many years but i think he's been playing very consistent and i feel like tobias harris while not earning the amount of money that he's getting paid uh mm-hmm is a, a been a very viable third option. Um, but they also have so many other guys who have been very good for them uh, quickly. Um, yeah. Yeah. The Kale just, Bridges. Yeah. Like a reinvigorated squad. Just to... And uh, they unloaded Tybal, who it's crazy to think uh, that just a couple years ago, they had three like candidates for defensive player of the year. Um, Simmons and Tybal now gone. Uh, they've gone leaned into offense over that defense. So I don't know. I'm interested to see how they do. Um, I don't think Milwaukee or Boston have any concerns really in the first round, but I don't really think Philly does either. But I am intrigued to see how they look. <laughs> Holy cow! I still. Uh, so, a little blurb on Ben Simmons. He's had continued back, neck, a nerve issue in his back. Missed a total of 33 games this season with knee and back injuries. Nervous issue, not a nerve issue. A nervous issue. And get this. Our friend Ben has another two years remaining on his contract <laughs> Paying him thirty-seven, basically thirty-eight million dollars in twenty-three to twenty-four, and forty million in twenty-four to twenty-five. He is the highest-paid player on this net squad. Oh my goodness! All right, enough about the Nets. Enough about the Sixers. Eastern Conference. We're we're not anticipating much uh, much shakeups here. If there was before we move to the West, if there was one upset lurking here. Which one would it be? I don't know if I'd call it necessarily an upset, the four or five seeds. 
Well, I'm going to when we get to the Western Conference, but <laughs> I feel like that's going to be the closest one, and that has the closest coin flip probability to go either way. But if you'd like me to pick a dark horse upset, um, let's just say Jimmy Butler and Bam out of bio. And the heat, okay. Find a way to upset Boston. Okay. In round one. All right. Very interesting. Yeah. Well, let's let's move on to the Western Conference, where again seeds are not well. Seeds are valuable in determining home court advantage. However, we're talking about seeds and the difference of two, three games between most of these teams. One, even yeah, yeah, like... yeah basically uh, like tied records. So. Um, where do we start? You want to start start at that four five or the three six? Because in my book, these two are the most puzzling matchups of the first round. Yeah. So uh, this is crazy because Sacramento, like I don't even think they've been in the playoffs since like two thousand one or two, um, since they got uh, cheated by the lakers um there were so many very intriguing and almost glorious possibilities of like just crazy revenge type just scenario like dream rivalry grudge match scenarios uh and i feel like we didn't get any of them um but alas here we are i want to say sacramento is going to win that they've been underestimated all season that they've got some dogs and they are fast, faster than fresh the legs warriors, um, ready to run up and down. And Golden State's just track record on the road has been so abysmal. But it's Golden State, and I've got the chirping of T Wime <laughs> on ear every time he gets on Marco Polo <laughs> to say, "What's about Golden State? They're just going to win the title again this year." <laughs> Every time he talks, they've, like, they've got a they've got a kickwalk to the play to the finals. Just stop! Just enough out of you, T. Thank, thank you, T. Wine. We appreciate you. Ah, uh, I don't know. I can't call it. It's. I just. <clears throat> I think Sacramento wins. I I I hope Sacramento wins. Please, Sacramento win. <laughs> Help us all. <laughs> Just but I also feel kill, like kill the zombie. Finally zombie. put the stake through the heart and kill this monster that won't die. Yeah. It is the Golden State Warriors. Yeah, it'd be great. But they're like defending champs. So like how bad could they have gotten in a year? And now Andrew Wiggins is going to be back. And it's just going to be like, oh, nobody cares about the regular season. It's the playoffs. We'll do what we want. They also got, like, they got the most favorable matchup. They don't have to travel far. They got a team that's super young and has zero playoff (laughs) experience. Like, uh, it's... I guess you could say, so I'm, I'm looking at the... No, I'm going to ask you a question. This this is a fun trivia question, Justin. Yeah. Name the Kings starting lineup. Well, uh, De'Aaron Fox. Okay. Uh, ding, ding, Harrison ding. Barnes. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, Damana Sabonis. Ding, ding, ding. Um, Huerter. Yep. Her- Herder. Herder. And one more. I'm gonna throw out a name and I don't even think he plays for them. I don't know who he plays for. Sangoon? No. Uh Keegan, Keegan Murray. Keegan Murray. And All let's right. see if uh I got close. Four I'm out of five, seeing, maybe. I'm not seeing Sangoon here. All right, I don't know who he plays the for. The Kings have Malik Monk. Yeah, Malik Monk, a cast off from the Lakers. They I don't know why. Cast off from the Hornets. I don't know. So, he was so I, at some point. I, I asked that trivia question because you could almost make the case that their most experience in terms of playoff minutes 
most experienced player is Harrison Barnes out yes. of the squad. Ooh. Golden State got yeah. rid of to get Kevin Durant. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. But uh and then uh what we had Sabonis, he's made the playoffs when he was at the Pacers, but they were so yeah. bad. They're the next guy that has experience with Swearer with the with the Hawks. Right? Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I th- I think I think you nailed it though. This this to me is probably the <clears throat> the most uneasy that I feel and also the most conflicted I feel between what my head says and what my heart says. Because my heart says I want to see the Warriors lose. They have a worse record. They don't they don't play well on the road. And then ugh, I just can't nothing would bring me more joy in the first round than to see the Warriors lose. Than to see the Warriors lose. But again, it's like they they find a way to pull out wins out of out of a hat. And it being so close in California, not having to travel very far. Oh, I don't like it. I don't like it. Seems fishy to me. Yeah. I think something got rigged. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This one. Four or five. Four or five, baby. See, to me, this there are more consequences to this this matchup. So Kings Warriors, basically like it will be explained away because okay, if the Kings lose, it's like, oh, yeah, you did great in the regular season, but you didn't have the experience, blah, 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 you're young, blah, blah, blah. And if the Warriors lose, it's like, oh, you know, the, the all of their warts showed up. They couldn't win on the road, blah, blah, blah. Like, but with this Phoenix Clippers, it's almost like you lose this, And this has implications on your trajectory going into next season. Like there's so much more expectations on the shoulder of these teams to not lose. How many years are we into the Kawhi Leonard, Paul George experiment? Four years? Is this five years maybe? No, not five years. Four years? Toronto did won the title not that long ago, right? Let's see. Yeah, what? Toronto won in 2019? Golden State won last year. Milwaukee the year before? Yeah, it was summer of 2019. when Lakers the in the bubble season the year before? So this is what? Year four of Kawhi being there? Did they get Paul George the same year? Yep, they did. So we're four years into that. Um, And if they get bounced in the first round, it's like you just keep trotting them out because what else do you do? You try and trade one. Are they at the end of their – does one of them want to not resign? But I really want to see Kawhi guarding Kevin Durant. Yes. Like, my God goodness am i excited to watch some of this like please give me like throwback 2016 17 18 19 Kawhi. give me something give me i don't know half those seasons he didn't even play but give me a one series one seven game series of vintage Kawhi defense just claw locked down Mm. on evan durant Oh my goodness. One of the few yes. two way players that is built to defend a guy like Kevin Durant. Is Paul I mean, George healthy? He's Does, not. Is he not playing? He is so the reports are that he he's still nursing, I think it's knee a knee injury. Wow. Because and he he almost hundred percent sure he will not start the series. Now it's so, likely he will be available to play. Once the series begins, we're not sure what capacity that means, but I, I, I highly, I mean, if, if they, if 
they go down two games, if they go down three games, I think there's a chance that, you know, they just shut it down. But I think I think we're looking at Paul George coming back. So here's the thing. So I know in the four five matchup in the East, I said it wouldn't be an upset if five one, even though that's a four game disparity. But in here, even though it's a one game disparity, because Phoenix has had so little of Kevin Durant actually there that the expectations now that he's there and healthy and they're all playing is are is so high. They're like, if he had been there all season, I think their seed is a lot higher. Yeah. Right. I think their records a lot better. Yeah. So I feel like there's actually supposed to like the Lakers are, or the Clippers are who they say they are, but Phoenix is actually a lot higher than that. They should, the Phoenix should be a much better seed than but four. What a dark horse. Like if we had a healthy Kawhi guarding Kevin Durant for seven games and a healthy Paul oh, George oh. guarding Devin Booker for seven games, like, oh, oh, oh like that's, that's what we're getting robbed of. And like that and- matchup to me would just be lights out. Like I'm still very excited to watch this. Yeah. I think Phoenix has the edge and ends up winning this series. Because I just think with the questions of Paul George's health, the fact that they picked up Russell Westbrook inexplicably uh, to bring down uh, the defense and the chemistry of their of their team, um, I just don't think the Clippers have what it takes. Uh, I think we're in year four of a totally failed experiment where we're going to ride Kawhi Leonard, who has proven that he – is not healthy, not reliable, not available um, for such long stretches. I feel like he's played so little in LA since getting there that it's like they need to go someplace new. He needs well, to go it, where and, he needs and I would say in her guy. In fairness to both Paul George and Kawhi, they've played very few minutes together with both of them healthy as well so right. so there, there's always that what if like and that that's what's got to suck if you're a Clippers fan like what what if these guys were healthy and we we're in a better seed I, and you're spot on like this in another reality this is Western Conference Finals right here like with full full potential these teams are not even anywhere close to these current seeds so I think we are in agreement that this is probably the fire first round matchup is is right here. This series, eh. it could be, but I think because of the things that we it, just sh- it should be. Yeah, this is a fire sauce. Well, matchup. this this yeah, this is a, a much this is a much better like. I, may, maybe this is a more accurate statement. This is a much better matchup than what it appears on paper. Like a lot of people will look at this and casual fans will look at this and go like, Oh, look at these records, look at these seeds, but not realize that both of these teams are much better than four and five seeds. So, so this, this is a much better matchup than a lot of these other, you know, first round series. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, Phoenix to me has, the wildest upside out of all these teams that so i went to a hornets game uh hornets played the suns actually on the night that kevin durant started with them shout out to to grizz for going to that game we had an absolute blast and there were moments of brilliance where you just saw like I mean, you saw enough of the plays where KD just bailed out the Suns late in the shot clock because he can shoot from anywhere over single double teams. But they have the most upside in terms of how creative they could get, how much of a playbook they can open up, how dominant, like, um, overshadowed in this whole period is how well DeAndre Ayton is playing. Like, one of the, probably what I think the best big in the league right now is is DeAndre Ayton. So what? well what? The best center, okay? The best like pure center in the league. Wait a second. What? DeAndre Ayton, the best center in the league right now. Pure center in the Joel league. Embiid? 
to the two, best two way player. I'm saying pure center. He's not. He's not better. Joel Embiid is not a pure center in my book. What? He's 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 a point guard. He plays multiple positions. Okay. Oh my he, gosh. he can play he's all the positions. Point guard? What are we? He's he's a point oh, guard. He's a right. shooting guard. He's a power okay. forward. Uh, okay. What what a the modifier there, Justin is. Aiton is like the best pure center in the league. He is like textbook center player. He's he's not he's not the league MVP. Okay, he's not. Nobody else fits a textbook center. There's very few in the game anymore. Jared Allen, that would be it. That's there's two in the whole league. What about uh, would you put Jaron Jackson in there? Jay? Yeah. Would you put? He's. I feel like he's he's a. Uh, he does he shoot the three? I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I got you pretty riled up with that one. That's the best, the best center in the league. Wow. But uh, yeah, this team center who's won back to back MVPs for crying out loud. <laughs> okay, we'll strike that one from the record. I'll I'll edit that one out. You get my point. Suns Suns could be dangerous. They could do some real damage here. And Golden State is lucky that they don't have to face up really either of those teams in the first round. Definitely dodged a bullet there. Yeah. But they could lose to LA in the second round, so it'll be okay. (laughs) (laughs) Keep keep smoking that crack pipe. (laughs) The Lakers crack pipe. (sighs) Oh. Um, Memphis or Nuggets? Who goes further? Who goes further? Yeah. Whoever avoids Los Angeles in round one. Okay. That's what it comes down to. I'll say Denver goes further because I think they're going to get to play, I don't know, Minnesota or OKC maybe. So you think we got Lakers, Grizz, and then Minnesota, OKC playing Denver? One of those two? Yeah. How many games would uh, Grizzlies-Lakers go then? Seven. I can't see it. Yeah, because like you said, they're going to be – the winner of that 7-8 seed is going to be – beat for game one at bare minimum mm-hmm. they're going to get their sea legs under them uh, and obviously Memphis is no slouch they're fast they're younger um, but they don't have you know they're not without faults of their own so um, if Anthony Davis is playing at like a 35 and 13 level like, is Jaron Jackson Jr. as great? I mean, he could win Defensive Player of the Year. Is he capable of slowing him down? The Lakers have anybody that can guard John ja Morant? Not likely. Wait, but you were Still saying, Brooks. Justin, that they have one of the best defenses in the league. Still what? and Brooks going to guard? Well, yeah, they do. But one on one matchup, John Morant's gonna get his. They don't have a like a singular stopper, like a, a defense. Lo- yeah, just lockdown. So, like, like a, you see a handful of these teams have one guy who's gonna go out and guard the best player on the other team every night, no matter what. I, Memphis is good. They can win. They could win the first series. I just think it's gonna be a long series. It's going to go the distance. Yeah. All right, man. We've got our field set. We've got our game set up. Starting tomorrow, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. Full menu. Any sure. other... Uh... Any uh, thoughts as to a Baja Blast breakthrough player? Oof. 
our triple our triple BPs. Mm, I'm looking at a team with players that I want to see become triple BPs. I'm looking at a certain team with the number three seed from Sacramento. And I'm looking at the most clutch. I don't know if this is triple BP though. De'Aaron Fox won. How sweet would it be to see him winning games, out shooting the Warriors, knocking him out, and then Sabonis. Like, this guy is an absolute grinder. And the numbers he's putting up right now have been phenomenal. I, I would love to, so I'd love to see the Kings do well in the playoffs. Uh, but those two guys in particular, I would just, I would love to see those guys thrive, but you know, th those are both fairly household names. So who do you got? You got anyone who flying under the radar? Most people won't uh, realize until they make a big splash in the postseason. Yeah. If you haven't been following the NBA at all, really this season, um, there's a guy who's been getting the Alex Caruso treatment in LA uh, in Austin Reeves. I asked about the similarities. He said, well, we're both white. So that's about as far as it goes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so uh, totally different uh, style there. Um, but he has been on a tear in the last. He's, he's their leading scorer, right? Uh, no, but he's no. been playing. <laughs> <laughs> LeBron and AD are both averaging 25 plus to 28. But the, but he's the, like, the consistent. He's been extremely third. Easy, third Star. Third best score. So uh, if they make any type of run, expect to hear his name a decent amount for people who have not been following. Um, I feel like I just want to say anybody that's on the Cavs, because this is going to be their first seven game series since LeBron left um, back in 18. So, um, yeah, I mean, here's the uh, Donovan Mitchell is back in the playoffs. And I feel yeah. like the last time we saw him healthy and like oh. a great series was years nuggets against the nuggets and Jamal Murray and Jamal Murray in the bubble. Yeah. So like, I don't know. I, there's not as many guys who I haven't quite heard of that, you know, I mean, obviously anybody on the Kings roster, because there's a whole bunch of people out there that nobody's heard of. And if they – No one's been watching this season. You're going to be like, who is this guy? Who is this guy? So any one of them could light it up and be um, well-known. Um, we're pretty familiar with a majority of these other teams, though. They There's a lot of star power in the playoffs right now. Yeah. So, yeah, I uh, – Yeah. Let's do it. I, I gotta I gotta pay some tribute to the Nuggets here. And shout out shout out to Denver for um <laughs> names that people should know of. I mean, obviously we know Nikola is gonna be a magician, but um Michael Porter Jr. and Aaron Gordon, you know, th these should be fair fairly well known names, but Aaron Gordon all-star level contributions for this team. Michael Porter Jr. healthy. Like this is this is a well-rounded Nuggets squad. And uh they're I, there's gonna be more like cracks and more matchup problems the further we get in the playoffs. But don't sleep on the Nuggets, man. Don't give sleep me, on me, the Nuggets. Jamal Murray and give me Donovan Mitchell seven oh. games for the finals, baby. Come what, on. Okay, what are we going to do if we have Nuggets, Cavs in the finals, Justin? Are we just going to live stream the whole game? <laughs> oh, that would be that would be glorious. That would be glorious. All right. Well, that is our play in and playoffs preview. We got some basketball to get to, my friend. Yes, sir. Stay tuned. We'll be coming at you with uh, all our thoughts on the playoffs as they progress. Before you know it, we'll have, uh, what, this time next week will be one game in, maybe two games in to some series. So 
Ooh, yeah, because they start Saturday. It's, so it's, and then Saturday there should be games on Monday, Monday night. Be one or two games in on a, every series. And can't wait for some of the fireworks we're going to be witnessing in the next few days. Oh, yeah. My man. Take it easy. Taco Bowl Tuesday. Tuesday. Taco Bowl. <laughs>